Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he knows and shows them the magic and mystery of science and everyday living. Mr. Wizard? Oh, hi, Alan. Come on in. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi. Come on around here. What's that? You see that white stuff there? Yeah. That's uh, fried ice. Fried ice? French fried ice, anyway. In fact, here, here's some water. Yeah. You pour it into that uh, little uh, saucer. Right. See? Doesn't it sound like uh, you're French frying something? Yeah. And what you poured in there was water, so obviously what you get out is French fried ice. Yeah? Yeah. Now, obviously you can't fry ice, uh, but it certainly looks like it. But mm -hmm. anyway, you'll see how, why this is important today as we investigate how a refrigerator works. Most people go to the refrigerator, open it, feel it's cold, yeah. take out some food, close the door, and really don't know too much about how it works. Do you know anything about how a refrigerator works? No, not really. Well, it, let me see. Let me put some of that and step on it. Yeah. Um, I have a problem for you. In a, it's a warm summer day. Uh-huh. You have screens on the windows, you know, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah. So is it a good idea to close the windows and open the door of the refrigerator because then you'll cool off the kitchen? All the cold, you know, people would think will come out. Or the heat of the room will go into the refrigerator and that way you'll be uh, cooler in the room. No, it isn't a very good idea. Why not? Well, all the uh, things inside the refrigerator will become warm again and yeah. the ice cubes will melt and it's just not a good idea. Well, you're right. It is not a good idea, but not for the reasons that you just gave me. In fact, it's a pretty terrible idea. Yeah. But it's not because of the fact that the ice cubes are melted. Well, it's true, they would. Yeah. The reasons are something else again. All right, let's see if we can solve that, uh, that question. You'll be able to answer it yourself, I think, before we finish. Uh, we could go look at the refrigerator back there in the corner, but there's not much point to it, because when you look in the refrigerator, this is about all you see, isn't it? Yeah. Open the door and you see all the food piled oh, on the top on sh in shelves. And all of the important parts of the refrigerator these days are all hidden. Mm -hmm. So here they are, right here. These are all the important parts. And as we find out about them, let's put them up here, and pretty soon you'll see how the whole refrigerator works. Okay. And you'll see why that question, uh, your, your answer was incorrect. Okay. First problem, what is the purpose of a refrigerator? What do, what do we want to do all inside here? Well, we want to keep the uh, food cold. Yes. So we, if we put the food in when it's hot or warm, somehow we have to take that heat away from the food. Yes. Okay, so our first problem is how do we take heat away? Very simple. Mm. Here, I'll show you. Your hand hot? Yeah. Okay, well, let me give you that one. This one. See what it says on there? Alcohol. What it's happened? It's cold. Yes, it's cold. There's a refrigerator. We're taking heat away from something. Yeah. Your hand. <laughs> Why now does that do that? Why is it that when we put alcohol on your hand, we have a refrigerator? Well, it evaporates. No, what's that got to do with it? Why should it, the fact that it disappears, why should it make it cold? I don't think most people could answer that one. Hmm. Kind of a tough one. Yeah. Well, here's another clue. Here's that. Remember our old friend, this thermometer? Yeah. Uh, here's the part that, that we can tell what the temperature is. Mm -hmm. If it's down here on three and on low, okay. Notice what it says here now, the temperature is in the room. Uh, about 76 degrees. Okay, now I'll put it down here in the alcohol. What's the temperature of the alcohol? 76. Hmm? Well, this is what you'd expect. Isn't it? Yes. They've both been sitting here. Now I'll take this out, and you watch what happens. It's dropping. I thought before. we were the temperature of the room before was, why should it drop? Well, it evaporates. Yes. But why does that evaporation make it cool? That's the big problem. Yeah. How much did it drop? Uh, 10 degrees almost. 10 degrees, right? yes. Now, notice yeah. the speed with which it dropped. You know, fairly slowly. Yeah. Here's a piece of paper. You get ready to blow on it by just blowing air past it. Is it well, we have to wait until it gets back up. Yeah. Is it up there now? Almost. Yeah, it's up okay. there. Okay, now wave the paper at it real fast. What happens to the temperature? It's dropping real fast. Yes. 62. Sixty. Fifty-eight. 
56. Now, notice it's beginning to slow up. It's yeah. not evaporating. The, the liquid is not evaporating so fast before. In fact, keep fanning. Keep going. Keep going. Hey, it's going up. Fan, quick. What happened? In spite of the fact that, that you, you know, fan at it real hard, it's now stopped and probably will slowly yeah. start back up again. Okay, now why? That's our big problem. Why is it that, that when something evaporates, everybody knows this, they know when it evaporates, but why should it cool off? Well, you remember our friends, the molecules? Yeah. Here they are again. Oh, boy. What, what did the motor represent? Heat. Okay, heat, and when we turn the motor on, it makes this rubber diaphragm in the bottom bounce up and down, and we can get these molecules to jiggle around, mm -hmm. and they, they, they represent hot molecules. Um, uh, in fact, maybe we ought to be sure that we understand what heat is in the first place. What is heat? Well, heat is the motion of molecules. Heat is the motion of molecules. And do you remember what we found temperature was? Uh, the average. Average speed. Yeah. In other words, if you stuck a thermometer in here, it would sort of average out the speed and give you some kind of reading. Mm -hmm. Now, there would be some molecules that would be faster than others, right? Yeah. And others that would be slower than others. Okay, let's see if we can illustrate that. If we turn on the uh, heat. Now, notice we have some up here now? Yeah. Which were those, the slow ones or the fast ones? They were the fast ones. Yes. So if we have a thermometer stuck down in here, it's not going to be able to read these anymore, is it? No. Because they evaporated. They went off someplace. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it gets colder. Oh, I see. The hot, the hot molecules evaporate, and they leave the cold molecules. Yeah, they leave the colder molecules behind. Now, if you have a, a good supply of heat like this pump, and we keep on making those slower molecules faster all the time mm -hmm. so that they can evaporate, eventually it's going to get cooler and cooler and cooler. Right? Because we've got to get the heat yeah. from something. I'll turn the heat up. What happened? Well, all the uh, molecules evaporated. No, yeah, all the alcohol disappeared. In yeah. other words, if we were talking about alcohol, it all is floating around in the room now instead of being down over here. Uh huh. And we would have extracted some of the heat from here in order to get those molecules to go up there. Yeah. You know, let's look at that. You explain now what happens over there. Can you explain that what happened over here. Give me your hand again. When I put alcohol on the back of your hand, this could be perfume and cologne and rubbing alcohol, various. Liniment mm -hmm. things, things like that, that have alcohol in it. Why does it make your hand feel cool? Well, the the fast or hot molecules evaporated, leaving the cold molecules. Mm -hmm. And then what happens with the other molecules that are too cool to go away? Where uh, do they, how do they get speeded up? The heat from my hand mm -hmm. makes them warm, and then they evaporate. So you see, I said this was a refrigerator. You're taking mm -hmm. the heat away. Yeah. In fact, they use this as a, an alcohol rub in hospitals to help patients. Uh, you know, feel better. Mm. They give them a rub with this so it makes them feel cool all over. Now, would you please explain to me then why it is that when the temperature of the room is at what? Uh, it says about 64 now. 64? Hmm. It dropped. There was still some alcohol in there. Yeah. Uh, now, what's the temperature of the alcohol? Uh, 74. Okay, now when I take it out, now, what are we doing here? We're averaging the speed of the molecules in yeah. here. Okay, mm -hmm. and now what happens when I take it out? Notice, by the way, if I leave it right there, what happens? Does it drop? No. It's not in the alcohol anymore. It doesn't drop. No, why not? Why does it drop when I take it out? Well, it's shielded. Yes, yeah, all, so there's many molecules of alcohol are probably going back as they're coming off. Mm -hmm. But now when I get it out into the air... Now it goes down again. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this? Well, because the, uh... Hot molecules evaporated, leaving the cold molecules. Mm -hmm, that's right. And in this case, we're taking the heat from the probe itself and mm -hmm. using that to help speed up those molecules. So you see, we've taken heat away. And when you fanned it like this... That uh, spread out the hot molecules so that 
They blew, couldn't bounce back. That's right. Blew them further away so there was more room around it for other hot ones to come up. Okay. Well, now you get the idea that we can take heat away from something if we simply let it evaporate because evaporation takes heat away. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's, um, let's actually take heat away now and uh, freeze some water. Okay. Over here. Remember that, that stuff I was uh, playing with? Uh -huh. Just fried. Yeah. Here, well, I'll get another dish. Now. Ordinarily, you use fat or grease or something like that to, uh, yes. to uh, deep fry, french fry something. But I'm not going to use that. You know what I'm using? You recognize the can? Uh, yeah, it's Freon. Yeah. 12. Freon 12. And you never... Why is it bubbling up there? Uh, well, last time you said that it boils at uh, minus 21 degrees. Right. It boils at 21 degrees. Therefore, the heat in this dish is, along, is enough to make it boil. Yep. To make it evaporate very rapidly. Okay, now why doesn't it continue? Um... I'll tell you, touch the side of the dish. It's cold. Yeah, no more heat left in it. Or it's down at the same temperature as the, as the liquid uh, Freon. Mm -hmm. So now we have a very cold bath. Put your, <laughs> here, let me take the rest of the ice out of this water now, and I want you to put your finger in it. See how cold it is. Pretty cold, huh? Yeah. Okay, what happens when you, pu you pour, it in, pour it in there? Now, why, why does it do that? Uh, How come I can fresh fry water? Well, you're taking the uh, heat away. I'm taking the heat away from the Freon, and where, where am I getting it from? The uh, water. Yes, yeah, and if you take heat away from water, what happens to it? It freezes. Freezes. Yeah. So we're really freezing water in very strange shapes here by putting it into a very cold bath and evaporating some of the bath, taking the heat away by evaporation. Boy, it really yeah. freezes it quickly, doesn't it? Because it's so, so very cold. All right, now let us try to do this with the refrigerator. Our first problem was to somehow take the heat out of the food and get it someplace else. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we do that? you know in the refrigerator? Uh, well, you have to freeze it. You have to, well, you have to at least get it cold. Yes. And I'll start you out here. I'll put these pipes up here. Now, ordinarily, in a modern refrigerator today, you can't see them. They're buried someplace. Yeah. But what goes on on those pipes, do you suppose? Uh, well, it's... That's the, the uh, coldest part, isn't it? Yes, and the, uh, the heat is evaporated there. Well, the heat isn't evaporated, but a liquid is evaporated. Right here. Up here, a liquid evaporates, and so it absorbs heat. Takes food, takes the heat away from over here. Uh-huh. All right? That's yeah. where it takes place up here, all this evaporation. But you see that little, uh, that little uh, constriction right there? Yeah. Let's take and investigate another thing now. What happens if we don't just take the, the, let the thing let a gas evaporate or a liquid evaporate? But what happens if we just take pressure away, like that can of Freon here? In other words, we we want to see if we can't release as much, uh, get as much heat rid of as much of this heat as we can. Let's tape. Here's a piece of uh, tape. Mm -hmm. Take this probe right to the outside of the, of the can, right here, like that. All right. Yeah. Okay, now what's the temperature? Uh, 68. 68. See, I just used this, and so it's a little cooler than, cooler than room temperature. Now I'm going to, re to release and just let the gas escape. Not, not uh, uh, let it evaporate, necessarily, uh -huh. but just let it escape. And watch what happens to the temperature. Goes down pretty fast, too, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. In other words, in, or the, in order for the molecules in here to escape, they have to pick up heat from someplace because they can't move unless they're, you know, unless they get the heat energy. In this mm -hmm. case, they took it right from the side of the can and carried it out by just allowing the gas to get out. You see, it dropped quite a ways. It's below freezing. Right. So that that's another method we can use in order to take heat away. Just let a gas expand. Mm -hmm. Just let just take away the pressure. 
In fact, let's actually freeze some water doing that now. Over here, see I have little, uh, little uh, plastic, uh, they look like little graduates. Mm -hmm. And I can put a little water in the bottom, like that. Yeah. And you know what that is? That's a uh, carbon dioxide Yes, yeah, a carbon dioxide cylinder. And inside there is carbon dioxide under great pressure. And if I hold this like this now, can you work one of these? Just like that? I'll tell you, I'll hold it here, and we'll let that we'll let that gas escape quickly, and see if it'll absorb heat from the water and, and actually freeze it. Okay. I'll hold it on here, and now you push this little plunger right here. Go ahead. No, toward uh, with it that way, right towards you now. Towards you. No, toward push it in that way. Oh, in. Yes, we released the pressure, huh? Yeah. Now, as we did that, it had to absorb heat, so the, the hot molecules in the can, uh, or in the container, actually went in and helped the, ga the uh, uh, gas molecules speed up. Now, pretty soon, the, the heat from the container itself is going to go into the cylinder, and pretty soon, the heat from the water is going to go into the cylinder, mm -hmm. and finally there, and into the gas. Now, let's see. I want to make sure they give it enough time to absorb some heat because mm -hmm. it doesn't move too qu too quickly through the metal cylinder. So the gas released the uh, yes. heat and let it... Now, you see how cloudy it's getting down here? Uh-huh. That's the ice. That's ice. Here, I'll... I won't wait any longer. I'll pull it out. There, you see? Yeah. Just by releasing pressure... You take we, the heat away. We can take the heat away. Okay, now let's look at that diagram up here again. Let, uh, we'll start going up on this on this tube up here, and right here now, this is this is a uh, liquid under pressure, and when it gets right there, the pressure is suddenly released because it can now go fly faster. You see uh -huh. how it's all sort of pinched here and held back? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what can happen to the liquid when it goes through here? It expands. It expands, so it absorbs heat, doesn't it? Takes yeah. heat away from the food. At the same time, uh, the the liquid in here that hasn't it's still you know expanded is evaporating, so it takes heat from here also. Yes. Okay, so there's our problem. We got the whole thing solved. We've now taken the heat from the food. Mm -hmm. That's the refrigerator. There are a couple of other little minor parts, yeah. which I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, let's look at all this other equipment back here. Yeah. Uh, well, let's pick, up, let's pick up the gas molecules right up at this point. Okay. Over here in that uh, molecule model of mine, let's, yeah. let's see what happens now with my new refrigerator version. Okay. Because... Big tall. Mm. There. Okay, now let's put in some molecules. Now we'll put a thing on the top just like we did before, you know, to catch them. Uh huh. But this time, notice it's got a hole here? Yeah. Well, that's a serious problem. Those, mo those molecules are going to come out. So I'm going to put a special thing like that. Now, if we can get the molecules, the real hot ones, yeah. to get all the way up to here, we'll take away a lot of heat, won't we? Yes. Then look what'll happen to them. They'll come back down. Yeah, well, let's try it, see if it works. Now that you see the work, let's make sure we understand what's going on here. Here is a liquid which is evaporating, and we're taking pressure away from it. In any mm -hmm. case, we're absorbing heat here, taking heat away by getting the hot molecules to evaporate up to here. And they come back. Okay, yeah. now when, when they get up here, notice they come back together again. They don't fly all around. Yes. I'm, pre I'm assuming that they, they change back to a liquid again. See, they're similar okay. to the ones that are down here when uh -huh. they pile up here. So we run that liquid back down over here and let them get heated up again. So we use the same molecules over and over and over. Watch. Okay. Just keep going. Uh, going.
round and round and round. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens in a refrigerator. Instead of just letting the gas escape, you know, and, and, and evaporate, and evaporate onto the room, uh, they get it all back and put it, you know, and use it over again. Uh -huh. Now, let's see if we can figure out how we do that. If it is true that when we took pressure away from a liquid, it could evaporate, yes. wouldn't it be logical that if we put pressure on it, we could change it back, the gas back to a liquid? Yes. Well, let's try that. Here's a different kind of Freon over here. <coughs> different kind, boils at a little different temperature. See, when I release it like that, out comes gas. And if I turn it over, I can actually get some of the Freon liquid. Mm -hmm. Now, notice it's boiling? Yeah. Now, go ahead and touch it one. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold. This, this one boils at about 38 degrees, above zero. Now, I want to be sure that all of this is cool. So I'm pouring it back and forth to cool off everything. Mm -hmm. And then... It'll evaporate soon. Well, now I'm evaporating more and more, but that's right, as I cool it off, that's the way uh, we're finding out how you cool things, is by evaporating a liquid. Now, I'll put just a little in the bottom, like that much, to get rid of the rest, just pour it out there and let it evaporate all by itself. And now I'll put this syringe bulb on the top so that I can put pressure on it. Now, we, this whole thing is now full of the gas. Yeah. With just a little liquid in the bottom. Now, if I squeeze on the bulb, I can put pressure on it. And it should turn and it back should turn, to a liquid. Turn back to a liquid. Now, you look right here. See that shadow? Uh-huh. Well, you look right in the shadow because the, sh the shadow going through the, uh, the flask makes the condensation quite clear. Let me turn it. There, see that, see that running down? Uh -huh. There's one that, now I let go, it disappears. I'll keep turning it a little bit till I can find a good place. There's a good one. Oh, Look yeah. right here now. Uh-huh. See how those little drops? Yeah. Now when I release, why the drops go away. What I'm doing here is condensing the vapor back into a liquid again by putting pressure and on the vapor. And if you kept oh. doing that, you turn it all into water? I turn it all back in, well, not water, into Freon. That would, oh, be, freon. That would be pretty yeah. hard to do, to change yeah. the Freon into water. <laughs> so there it is. By, by putting pressure... I get it to change back to, to a liquid again. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you remember when we allowed this stuff to evaporate, why we, it, it absorbed heat. If we now put pressure on a gas, doesn't it seem logical that it ought to give off heat? Yes. Just exactly the opposite. In fact, let's try that. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is to start a fire like the old, uh, like natives did a long time ago. And I'm, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm yeah. not. Here is a cylinder that has a plug in the bottom so that it's now a container full of air. You see there's a little uh, leather uh, washer up here so that when I push down like this, all the air in here is going to be compressed down to a little tiny mount down here. Heat is going to be given off. Remember, we're yes. slowing those molecules up so they're going to give off their heat. Well, it's going to get so hot that inside here there's a little tiny piece of a wick. Uh -huh. And if I can get it hot enough, I can catch that on fire. I'll blow on it like this to get it going. Mm -hmm. And here's a piece of that special flash paper. Yeah. And if we can cut the flash paper to my glowing spark, why, we'll set it on fire. You want to pick that up? Thank you. Okay, okay. you ready? Yeah. Let's try it. See if I can actually start a fire by getting the air hot enough by compressing. Touch it right there. Everything's going with the flash paper. See it? Uh-huh. In fact, I'll get my other wick up here and see if I can get it started. See it there? Uh-huh. Well, as long as you saw the spark, I won't bother to try to get it started. We won't bother to try the flash paper. But you can see now, by putting pressure on the, on the air, we made it give up a tremendous yes. amount of heat. All right, let's see how... Let's be careful with this. Let's see how that's accomplished over here. I'll put all the rest of the things in here, and you'll see if, if you can now trace what happens all the way around. 
We don't want heat in the refrigerator, though. No, you don't want heat in the refrigerator. And so we've got to get rid of it somehow, don't we? Mm-hmm. Now, see, let me put the rest of the parts up here like this and see if you can now figure out where they are, what happens in each place. You need to make one connection right there. Let's pretend that's connected, shall we? Okay. Okay. Now, this time, you start over here and go up and see what happens. Uh, this is now liquid I, under pressure. Uh-huh. And it gets up to that place, and it it's under... Uh, it's Under pressure it's on this under side. under pressure, yes. So what happens on this side? It expands. Right, it expands, and in order to do that... It evaporates. Takes away heat. It takes away heat. And evaporates in here, okay? All right. Now we have a gas coming down here. So the gas comes down. And what's that? Uh, a pump? Yes, a pump. That's a pump or a compressor. Mm -hmm. So you compress the gas from back into a liquid again. Notice there's a valve right here that keeps yeah. it from going back. So now we've made a, a liquid out, but you remember we just saw how much heat was given off, so we've got to get rid of the heat. Mm -hmm. So what do you suppose this is? Uh, coils. That's right, coils. And air is run by these, either by a fan or by convection currents, mm -hmm. so that we take the heat away and it goes into the room. Then over here, is a reservoir where the liquid is collected back yeah. again, and so up it goes, around and around and around. <laughs> so there's how a refrigerator works. It's not now so let, hard. let's uh, let's French fry some ice again. And while I do that, I want you to you while I get the freon ready, I want you to tell me now if you can figure out why it's not a good idea in the middle of summer to open the refrigerator door and uh, cool off the whole kitchen. Well, when you uh, open up the refrigerator, you're not really uh, cooling it off because why not? Well, you're just circulating the heat because the heat goes in and then out. It just That's goes right. around. The heat from the room would go into the refrigerator and all through all through the liquids and get pumped right back out again. Yeah. In fact, when they have air conditioners, how do they solve? When you have a room air conditioner, how do you solve that? Well, they put it near a window. Exactly. So when it escapes, it goes out the window. Right, so they pump the heat outside instead of pumping it back into the room again. Uh -huh. All right. And we illustrate the whole idea of, of, of a refrigerator by the fact that you can change a liquid into a gas and make it absorb heat. So go ahead, pour the water and get fried ice. Watch Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University. <laughs> <laughs>